Welcome to our virtual classroom. Join me for some fun learning. Hello, welcome to Storytime. It's your host, Miss Nicole of Legacy Lineage Online Learning. It is Multicultural Children's Book Day. Whoa, that's a lot that I said at the end of January. So that means the last day of January, January 31st, there's going to be a lot of information about Multicultural Children's Book Day. Uh, what that means is that maybe you should find um, someone who you love, a sister, a brother, a titi, a tio, abuela, a mommy, daddy, and, and ask them to read you a story about someone who is different than you. So someone who is not the same, not the same, someone who's different than you. And that's exactly what multicultural means. It means that there are people from all over the world and they are, even though people are the same, we do things a lot different. So in this story back here, this is about Native Americans and it's called Fry Bread. We are also going to have a story about my first Chinese New Year because when we read this story, the next month, February, is when they will celebrate their New Year. Although we've already celebrated our New Year at the beginning of January in America. And we will also be reading Feliz New Year, Eva Gabriela. So we are going to be looking at the way two different cultures celebrate New Year's. I already posted a story about uh, the snowy day and that talks about Peter. He lives in New York and his day and what happens when it snows. And this story that I'm going to read is called The Word Collector. And I love this story because this story has lots of words and words that we know are called vocabulary. So all the words that you know are called, is called your vocabulary. And so I also like this story because it has really fun words. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine syllables, which we're going to do by clapping and reading our story together. All right. So this is the word collector. Again, I have my music box and I'm picking out an instrument to sing the story time song. I don't really know how to play this, but I'm going to pretend. Here we go. I am reading, I am reading. Look at me, look at me. Time to put the toys away and listen to what I say. One, two, three, eyes on me. Good. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> the word collector, and look, this boy, how does he look? How does his face look? I think he looks so pleased and so happy and at peace. Like he's really, really enjoying something. He has his hands up and his eyes closed and he's just enjoying. What do you think he's enjoying? Let's find out. The word collector. <laughs> Look at all those words. Do you have any collections? So if you collect something, you have a bunch of them. You know what I collect? Books. I love books, especially children's books. And that's how I'm able to present you story time. So I'll tell you a quick story. So when quarantine happened, you remember when everyone stopped going to school and everyone had to stay at home because we were concerned about being safe. And so we were staying at home and we were staying safe. I remembered that there's a way that I can still engage and work with children. I have a collection of children's books. And if you could see behind the camera, there's all books all over the place. <laughs> and neat and organized though, but still a bunch of books like I'll show you. Right near me, here's a bunch of books. Let's see, uh, you probably already saw this one posted and I'm gonna be posting this one next month. And I already posted LeBron James. Let's see what other books I have. Oh, another stack of books right here. Told you I collected books. <laughs> These are books that I already posted too. Ooh, some of my favorite new ones, Thai Travels. Ooh, I really enjoy Cool Cuts because I collect books. Do you collect something? My son collects dinosaurs and garbage trucks, little toy garbage trucks. Um, I like to collect seashells when we go to the beach. That's another thing that I like to collect. Do you have any collections? 
Well, let's find out. It seems like this boy is passionate and he is a collector of words. Collectors collect things. Told you I got ahead of myself. <laughs> some people collect stamps. Some people collect coins. Others collect rocks. Some collect art. Some collect bugs. Others collect baseball cards. And some people collect comic books. And Jerome, what did he collect? So there are all the collectors collecting things. And as I told you, Miss Nicole is a collector of books. And my son, whom you've seen on Storytime, is a collector of dinosaurs and garbage trucks. And we also like to collect seashells. But what does, what does Jerome collect? This is not about me. This is about Jerome. What does Jerome collect? Jerome collected words. And there he is with a word in his hand. He collected words he heard. My trip to Peru was perfectly pleasant. Certain words caught his attention. And what is he doing as the person is talking about their trip to Peru? He's writing it down. Guess what? Let's write down Peru, just like Jerome did. He wrote Peru, P-E-R-U. We collected a word just like Jerome, Peru. He collected words he saw. Willow, Willow Tea Shop. Certain words jumped out at him. He collected words he read. Emerald, certain words popped off the page. So now we have to add Willow, cause he wrote Willow. Here we go. W-I-L-L-O-W. And he also wrote down the word emerald. Do you know what emerald means? Emerald is another way of saying the color green or a shade of green. So we're going to write emerald with the color green. Emerald. Here we go. E-M-E-R-A-L-D. I want to be sure I spell it correctly. So we've collected three words, just like Jerome. Let's see what else. Short and sweet words like spark, bloom, drift, and dream. Two syllable words, treasure, motif, candid, hover, glimmer, and whisper. And multi-syllable words that sounded like songs. Kaleidoscope, wonderful. Symphony, geometry, guacamole. Oh, now let's clap those words together. All right, let's start with the two syllable words. So he has the word treasure. Can you clap that with me? Treasure. And he has the word moti. Clap that with me, moti. And he has the word whisper. Clap that with me, whisper. And he has the word candy. Clap that with me, candy. And he has the word hover. Clap that with me, hover. And he has the word glimmer. Clap that with me, glimmer. Now we clap two syllable words. Let's get ready for some three syllable words. Ready? Here we go. Guacamole. Clap it. Guacamole. Geometry. Geometry, clap, kaleidoscope, clap, kaleidoscope, wonderful, wonderful, clap it, wonderful, symphony, clap it, symphony, whoa, that was fun, and look at him, he has his little wand, like a conductor, although I'm sure it's not called a wand, some type of conductor stick, we need to figure out the word for that, <laughs> All right, let's see what else. There were words he did not know the meaning of at first, but they were marvelous to say. Aromatic. Can you say aromatic? Ver vociferous. Vociferous. I almost couldn't say that. Vociferous. Effervescent. Effervescent. And I bet he collected those words. And you know what you can do if you don't know? Like I said, we can look it up. Like I said, what do you call this thing that the conductor uses 
to conduct an orchestra. I called it a wand, but I'm pretty sure it's not called a wand. And so aromatic, I'll help you. Aromatic means something that smells very, very fragrant or very good. Like maybe when it's dinner time and you smell something or cake baking, aromatic. Or maybe someone's making some fry bread and I'm sure it smells very aromatic. Effervescent. Effervescent means it's like bubbly and movie and full of life and really, really movie and bubbly and big and effervescent. There were words whose sounds were perfectly suited for their meaning. Molasses and Toronto and Tyrannosaurus Rex and bellow and smudge. And I'll let you get close to see those words. Smudge. Bellow. Toronto, which means a whole hard downfall of rain. Tyrannosaurus Rex. And molasses, which is like a really slow, slow syrup. Thick, too. That's what makes it slow because it's so thick. Jerome filled his scrapbooks with more and more of his favorite words. Jerome's collections grew. He began organizing them. Dreamy, science, sad, action, poetic. One day, while transporting them, look at all those words all stacked up. Those are all his collection of words, like my collection of books. He has them all stacked up. So let's see, he's transporting them. Let's see where he's taking them to. <gasps> Jerome slipped and his words went flying. Look at Jerome, how does he look? Dismayed, right? Dismayed. Dismayed is another word for upset, right? Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry that happened to Jerome. He began to pick them up. He noticed his word collections had become jumbled. Big words next to little words, sad words next to dreamy words. Let's see what he's gonna do about it. Jerome began stringing words together, words he had not imagined being side by side, like and symphony, and electric, and peace, and saber, and dreams, and cascading, and stars. He used his words to write poems. He used his poems to make songs. They moved and made delighted. And here he is. Look, 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 look. He's singing. Let's see, like I was trying to sing earlier. I am reading, I am reading. Look at me, look at me. Maybe Jerome's singing sounds a lot better than my singing. Because <laughs> these people seem to really enjoy it. Look. There's even a cat and dog listening to him. Some of the simplest words were the most powerful. I understand. I'm sorry. Thank you. You matter. Those are great words. We all need to have those words in our vocabulary. Let's say those again. I understand. I'm sorry. Thank you. And you matter. Thank you. That's how we say it in sign language. So if we use no words, we would say, and I'm, Jerome eagerly collected more and more of his favorite words. Does anybody know what eagerly means? That means he was excited and he did it with pleasure and looked forward to it, he eagerly collected more words. 
The more words he knew, the more clearly he could share them with the world. He could tell them what he was thinking, feeling, and dreaming. One breezy afternoon, Jerome climbed the highest hill, pulling a wagon packed with his word collection. He smiled as he emptied his word, his collection of words into the wind. He saw children in the valley below scurrying about collecting the words from the breeze. So what does scurry mean? Scurry means they're all running all over the place pretty quickly over here and over there in different directions. They are scurrying about collecting the words from the breeze. Jerome had no words to describe how happy that made him. So sharing his words makes him just as happy as sharing all my stories with you guys makes me. And the end says, reach for your, your own words. Tell the world who you are and how you will make it better. And you know who wrote that? The author whose name is Peter Hamilton Reynolds. The end. I really enjoyed Word Collector. This story made me feel inside the way he does about his words, about story time and all the books that I get to share. Some of them are really my favorite and they just warm my insides. And this is one of them, The Word Collector. I like Jerome. Thank you for joining me. See you next time. And remember, you are the you in unique.